Shalom and welcome to Two Minutes of Torah. This year is entitled The Command, the Mitzvah of Simcha. So we have the Torah, the rebuke of Pasha Kitabah for every scary calamity after calamity, and we've certainly seen over the last 3,300 3, years of Jewish history, we've shared our scene of calamities and destruction. The Jewish history is exactly what the Torah predicted. It's a roller coaster, highs like no other nation, lows like no other nation. And the uh, predictions here are horrible. And we say, yeah, because we don't keep the Torah, that's it. But it's not what the Pesach says, Mem Zayin, at the end of the parsha. Tasha Lov and Hashem, B'Simcha, to play We didn't keep the Torah, B'Simcha. So this is amazing. This requires some serious analysis. So I want to dedicate a couple of mini shirim to this topic. And this first year, I just want to mention, the Rambam says, that the Simcha and the Mitzvah is Avoda Gedola. At the end of Lulav, he says, it's a big Avoda. We need to go in and work at having Simcha at the Mitzvahs, while we perform the Mitzvahs. Rabbeinu Bechai on the Pasuk in the end of Kitab Mem Zayin, Perk Hofchet Pasuk, Mem Zayin says, it is a chova, and he says with every Mitzvah comes a double obligation. The obligation to do the Mitzvah, the person put up from Zuzah, he should do the Mitzvah, according to all the halachot and all the details, and two, he should do it for Simcha, two separate Mitzvahs. There's one reward for performing the Mitzvah of Mezuzah, a separate reward if you did it for Simcha. Every Every one of the mitzvot, that is how it's performed with a double aspect to it. This is Rebbeinu Bechaya. It's an amazing Rebbeinu Bechaya. It's Kedai to read it inside. Rebbeinu Bechaya on the parasha, Perek Havchet, and Devarim, Pasuk, Mem, Zayin. And it makes a lot of sense. You say, what do you mean? I'm doing the mitzvot. I'm keeping the mitzvot. It says, yes, I'd rather be sleeping in bed. I go to Minyan. I'm all upset. I'm down and I'm going to Minyan because I'd rather be sleeping, but I did it. I go to Shear. I didn't want to go to Shear. I wanted to stay and go watch uh, the game with my friends. But I came to Shear. Come on. Don't I get rewarded for that? I did the mitzvah. Okay, nice. I do the simcha, but I didn't. So, of course, a person starting out, uh, whatever is needed to get the person to do the mitzvah, of course, it's amazing. But as a person develops in life, this should be an excitement that all day long one could connect to Hashem. The Vaktabo have the Vekut and closest to Hashem. Every assay we do, we're getting close to Hashem. Every lot I say, I abstain, I have a desire to do say, no, I overcome it, I overcome my animal nature. And I'm getting closer to Hashem. That should be the greatest simcha. And if we don't relate to the mitzvah that way, it's just we're shackled, we're burning, like I have to do this, I have to do that. You're missing your whole relation to the mitzvah and to Hashem. And that's why the price is high. Because we're not robots meant to just do this and abstain from that. We're meant to go ahead and develop our natures, our souls, our neshamas, that we truly connect to Hashem. And if that's what we're doing, it should be in a state of simcha. And if we're doing it in a begrudging manner, we're missing the boat. So yes, we always have to start off with low lishma, not the highest level of motivation. It's true. But the goal the dream, the aspiration should be to get to a level where it's as a chut, it's a privilege, it's a merit that I could go ahead and to connect to Hashem hundreds of times daily and leave my physical Yetzirah behind and try to move to a different level in life. That should be a simcha. And that's the message of the Torah. There's other aspects of the message I will explore in the next two shirim on the topic. Shalom.